your day job is at Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you got a bit. You're a big. What are you, vice president of Project Street Beat? Yep. So you have a demanding career. I do. You have a demanding career. Uh, for those of you listening, Marcella is also a social worker. Absolutely. Like Juan and I. So you know, we tend to attract. <laughs> we tend to attract a lot of people in the helping profession. So tell me a little bit about um, the political climate now and what you're seeing on the ground. Yeah. Because, um, you know, we're a little removed um, from the day to day. And I, I, Planned Parenthood is one of those organizations. I used to work at the one in Buffalo mm. maybe 10 years ago. Wow. I didn't um, know that. Now they're central and western New York. Mm-hmm. They merged. But um, it was one of my favorite jobs I ever had. And I still feel very loyal to them. And it, awesome. I feel troubled. Yeah. I feel deeply disturbed yeah. with. What's happening? It's a troubling time. Mm -hmm. It's a disturbing time. I think, um, you know, I work at Planned Parenthood of New York City, which is our local affiliate Mm -hmm. here in New York City. We provide health care services, education services, and Project Street Beat. We um, take more of a community approach Mm -hmm. in providing street-based health care services through a mobile clinic, as well as case management for people living with HIV and chronic conditions and a lot of supportive services and harm reduction services. And so we have we have the real day to day reality of tens of thousands of New Yorkers who need our services, mm-hmm. who need our care every day. And so as a service provider, you have to stay focused on that. Now, you can't ignore the political environment in which we live, but you have to have a balance. So I think we we I think politically we do a really good job at making sure that Because we also have a very robust public affairs department, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but making sure that people and our supporters and our staff and, you know, our community really understands what is at stake and how they can be useful. And, you know, I think we live in a time where everything is at risk. So you may feel passionate about reproductive access, um, reproductive rights, um, reproductive justice, women's rights, Mm -hmm. or you may be focused on environmental rights. You may be focused on um, affordable housing. You may be focused on a number of issues. Everything is on the table. Everything is on the chopping block. Nobody has an excuse for not being informed or figuring out how to get involved. I think it can be overwhelming because Mm -hmm. there are so many things happening right right now and there are so many things that are under attack and there are also a lot of strategic distractions in the news um, that are done intentionally. Like mm. Twitter is used as a tool to manipulate mm-hmm. people and to distract us. And I think we have to stay focused on what's really passing through our legislative houses and how we can be useful as responsible constituents mm-hmm. and making sure that we let our voices be heard and um, demand that we get served the way that our elected officials are supposed to serve us. Definitely. Um, But in terms of Planned Parenthood, I'm most concerned about making sure that people understand that when there's the discussion on a federal level that talks about defunding Planned Parenthood, what they are talking about is not allowing people who have Medicaid to receive health care services at Planned Planned Parenthood health care centers. That is what that is. So what they're saying is we should have control over the poorest and most mm-hmm. vulnerable in our society and limit their health care options. And let's be clear, there are areas in this country where, you know, we're lucky in New York that we have a community of health care providers. Now, if for some unthinkable reason Planned Parenthood of New York City closed tomorrow, New, the rest of the health care providers cannot absorb all right. of our patients. We serve over 60,000 people a year. Wow. There's no, you know, <laughs> no one has the capacity to just say, oh, yeah, we'll just, take them. Just, yeah. And, and, and it'll, over. yeah, there'll be no air, um, mm-hmm. issues in access or, or anything. Everything will be streamlined. No, that's not going to happen. It would be a catastrophe. There are other places in the country where the health care provider is Planned Parenthood. That is where people go for a whole host of of healthcare services. There are healthcare providers, um, Planned Parenthood affiliates across the country that provide primary care services. Yeah, because I'm hearing you talk about what you do mm-hmm. and 
it's like it's not just reproductive health or birth, no. birth control. Everyone's like birth control, it's birth control. But you're providing like A life whole, yes, saving services yes. that go beyond the scope Absolutely. of just reproduction. And and our reproductive health care services and our sexual health care services are critical. It is important that we are available to people who want to exercise their right to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. We provide it safely. We have some of the most skilled, amazing providers that you're going to find. Mm -hmm. And I'm comforted by the fact that I know that if there is someone who feels that they need an abortion, I know that there's a safe place that they can Mm -hmm. go and they'll be taken care of and they will be shown that compassion and that love and that sound, safe clinical care Mm -hmm. that they Mm -hmm. need because we all deserve that. Absolutely. Regardless of what healthcare service we're getting. So I'm really proud that I work at a place that provides that service and protects it. Um, and birth control is critical. You know, we can't we can't have a conversation about abortion without talking about birth control and allowing people access to the information they need to make decisions about their bodies and their lives, access to the resources and the tools so that they can exercise and access those things. And then, like, making sure that we are looking at the whole span of of issues related to sexual and reproductive health. Mm -hmm. And it's not about judging. It's not about controlling. It's not about limiting. We have a really smart group of folks that live in this country in terms of their own bodies. They can make decisions. You don't have to, you know, put these parameters on people Mm -hmm. to try to corral them into making a decision that suits your political agenda. That is terrifying and ridiculous and and a strategy that's used in this country in a really concerning way Um, but I think what people really need to do is be aware be aware Mm -hmm. of what's happening in your community I am so excited Uh, I've been seeing a lot more um, what are they called like campaign signs Mm -hmm. from across the country of people running for the school board running for their city council like young people of color Mm -hmm. who are getting off the sidelines and not just getting off the sidelines because I don't think a lot of people who are running for office right now have been on the sidelines I think they've been in Mm -hmm. the work in some Mm -hmm. way doing it but I think now people in their communities are trusting them and people in their communities are looking to them to say you know what I need to give you a shot I need to show you my support because I see that you're trying Mm -hmm. and I see that you're committed and you might be able to make some change. Yeah. You know, we, we need to invest in that new generation of people who are willing to make the sacrifices and serve in public office. It's not easy. And it's not, mm-hmm. you know, they do it because they care. They right. do it because. It's not for um, the money. <laughs> it surely isn't for the money. You know, you have all these young people who are worried mm-hmm. about their communities. They're worried about their families. And they're trying to to get in the game and, and, and make a change. So. That's really so exciting. Yeah, yeah. So exciting. Like every time I get on Instagram or Facebook and I see another one, I'm like, wow, look at all these young. That's amazing. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. And I think too, like I'm, you know, really trying to be intentional about seeing the positives of the mess we're in now. So I think if we have more representation of Absolutely. young, you know, people of color that are stepping up and running for office and actually representing the communities. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's a beautiful thing that came out of this kind of catastrophic yeah situation <laughs> yeah because it's a mess i mean it's <laughs> it's a mess let's uh, you know i think it's important to have a balanced view of things mm-hmm. but oh our country we we it's a real struggle point right now it is i yeah. agree i agree but you know you got to keep on moving on absolutely and because um, we have work to do right there's still <laughs> that's right there's still work to do and there's like you said there's how many patients Sixty thousand patients over sixty thousand, at least that's and still... that's just in our health centers not to mention all the people we educate mm-hmm. and all the like mm-hmm. young people adults professionals all the people that we serve through project street beat with case management services and you know we do Narcan trainings and we distribute clean syringes. You know, we provide all of these really critical services. And um, tomorrow we still need to do that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So what would you say to folks that um, maybe aren't as connected to the movement but want to get involved? What's What are some helpful things like, um, you know, uh, a community member could do that would be helpful to keep um, Planned Parenthood in business? Yeah. I mean, I, the thing that I always say first in dealing with, our political climate in this country is check in with yourself Mm. and make sure you're okay. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we've, 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 we've become accustomed to really abusive, oppressive, racist, homophobic 
just really divisive, destructive language and actions in this country. And that takes a toll. And just because it's happening every day doesn't mean that it's not affecting us. Mm. And it's really important that people take a step back and, and reflect and see how they're doing. 